Okay, in our second video today, we're going to talk a lot about Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. Both are considered Homo sapiens, but Neanderthals are a little bit lesser form of the modern human. And uh, remember, they were smaller, but they were thicker and more compact. They were built for cold weather climates. The big thing I want you to know is why did they uh, end up in competition with Cro-Magnons for food sources and think about how they used their environment to do what they needed to do. Then I want to talk, uh, make sure that you focus on how did humans spread around the world and which theory do you think was probably the best. There's a really good video on YouTube that I have linked on the webpage to, uh, to help you out. Okay, uh, good luck with this video. We'll see you at the end. Okay, this is Unit 1, Part 2, Neanderthals, Cro-Magnon, and Migration. Our SOL is we're going to explain the impact of geography on the environment for hunter-gatherer societies. We're also going to talk about how archaeologists uh, are changing uh, their viewpoints and how they think things happen with these ancient peoples. Okay, so remember that everybody's job was to hunt and to gather. And gathering was the most reliable source for uh, finding food in this time period. The Paleolithic society uh, meant that females had a huge role in these ancient societies. So they were matriarchal or female di dominated. If it was patriarchal, it would be male dominated, which societies will certainly become that soon enough. Women were often seen as symbols of life and fertility because they had the babies. So a lot of early religion is tied to this idea as the woman giving birth, giving life. This is the idea of sympathetic magic. It is thought that early man drew on cave walls uh, and created fertility statues and these different things to show their daily lives. Obviously, these are part of the primary sources that we've talked about. All right. So in your notes, uh, I want you to fill in where it says many archaeologists believe that ancient groups were very matriarchal or female dominated. Create a theory as to why that may have changed over time. All right. So let's talk Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens are the start of modern humans. The, the word means wise person. <clears throat> This group is split into two distinct groups in the ancient time period. The first is Neanderthals, and then Homo sapiens sapiens, so smart they had to name us twice, uh, the first of which we think was Cro-Magnon. Now Neanderthals. Neanderthals were discovered in the Neander Valley of Germany, and that's where they get their name from. Uh, we think that they probably started anywhere from 100 to 250,000 years ago. Uh, they lived in Europe and in Turkey. And the cool things about Neanderthals is that they were designed for cold weather climates. Their, their bodies are amazing adaptations to the cold weather. They used stone tools, they buried their dead, and we think they had some primitive religious beliefs. It's originally thought that they were killed off by modern thinking. Some evidence has said that it could be genetic, genetic mixing between those two groups and they had the recessive genes so they lost out genetically uh, but there is pretty strong evidence that they were probably competing for the same food sources and were killed out by a little bit smarter person the modern human okay if you notice a big thing about their their heads is they have huge nasal cavities and uh, a longer jaw and a little bit smaller cranium and I have a really cool video on Neanderthals for you to watch. The glaciers of Europe not only shaped the landscape, but the features of the Neanderthals who lived here. Their bones grew strong in direct response to the stress they were subjected to. The walls of Neanderthal leg bones are particularly thick. Joints around the elbow, hip, and knee are also enlarged. Shaped by the habitual pressure of living life as a Neanderthal, they also show signs of bowing. Seen in contrast to the modern leg beside it, Neanderthal bones are not just thick and bowed, they're much shorter than our own. Short, 
heavy bodies reduced the skin's surface area, helping to maintain a high body temperature. Even their noses evolved to cope with the extreme cold weather. Their nasal cavities are larger than our own and contain extra capillaries and mucus to warm and moisturize the air, preventing damage to fragile internal tissue. This combination of features makes Neanderthals the first human species specifically adapted to a cold climate. To our eyes, their faces may look ugly, but they are a triumph of evolutionary adaptation. Formation where they were found in France. They are the first of the modern humans. And if you look at the picture in the, the right-hand corner up there, that is a Neanderthal compared to a Cro-Magnon. Now, Cro-Magnons had sharper, thinner blades. So better weapons, they use bone, ivory in their weapons to make more complex tools and weapons. Eventually they're going to invent a spear and the bow and arrow. They will also invent hammer, hooks, and they'll start to build their houses Sometimes from stone. I guess there just aren't enough rocks. And when you're building everything out of rocks, that's what happens. Sometimes you just don't have enough rocks. Nothing in this Neanderthal's life could have prepared him for this encounter. The stranger doesn't just look different. He thinks and acts in ways which are quite alien to a Neanderthal. He is a new species of humanity. A Homo sapien, known in Europe as a Cro-Magnon. Seeing is one thing. Comprehending is another. We can't know exactly how Neanderthals reacted to their first sight of Cro-Magnons. But coming from such a sheltered world, it may be that they simply did not understand the significance of what they saw. Okay, here in your notes, what I would like for you to do is create three reasons why cro Magna may have had an advantage over Neanderthals. Think about it after watching the videos and uh, that. Okay, so modern humans, 
We believe that they first appeared in Africa between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago. They began to migrate outside of Africa 100,000 years ago. And we think they've replaced Neanderthals by about 30,000 BC. By 10,000 BC, modern humans could be found throughout the world due to migration. Now there are two theories about how this migration took place. One is the out of Africa model, which states that Homo sapiens became modern in Africa and then moved out and replaced other groups in the world. Now, the other theory is called the multi-regional theory, which states that early humans or hominids moved to other places of the world and modern humans and evolved into modern humans after they got there uh, in Africa, Asia, and Europe. So, which theory do you buy into? Okay, so here is a map on human migration. If you notice, things start in Africa, uh, around 100,000 BC, and then they move to other parts of the world, eventually into Asia, across the Bering Strait, over into the Americas, and then down into South America, spreading around the world. Now, during the last ice age, uh, somewhere between 100,000 and 8,000 BC, the water level in the oceans dropped, revealing a land bridge at the Bering Strait. And, uh, of course, this was in Asia and North America, connected Asia and North America. Okay, so which migration theory do you think was most likely? Was it the multi-regional theory or was it the out of Africa theory? And if you would write in what you think is the best theory right here on your notes. Okay, so what were the big ideas for this video? The first one was the role of women was important in early hunter-gatherer societies. What made it so? Think about the reasons. Why did it change? Number two, Neanderthals were the first Homo sapiens designed for cold weather climates. And they specifically, their bodies specifically adapted for, to the uh, environment. The third big idea is that Cro-Magnons are the first modern humans and probably won out genetically and uh, for superior, other superiority reasons over the Neanderthal. And Homo sapiens migrated from Africa to Eurasia, Australia, and the Americas and you can pick your theory as to how that happened. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure that you keep up with your journals and your notes.